In the last video, we looked at an overview of the concept of demand. In this video, we are going to be looking at what changes demand, or we're gonna, at least going to start looking at uh, what changes demand. Uh, so there are five demand shifters that we're going to talk about um, probably over the course of two videos, right? Uh, but we're going to go ahead and list them right now. All right, so uh, income, number of buyers, price of related goods, expectations, and tastes slash preferences. All right, so these are the, the five shifters of demand. Right, uh, before we start looking at these individually, we're going to talk a little bit about what changing demand looks like. Uh, we, we mentioned this in the last video, but I wanna just uh, you know, very clearly put it out there for everybody. Um, so, I'm going to draw out a couple of, of these demand curves. Always uh, labeling my axis, uh, my axes with price and quantity, as well as labeling my curve. All right, so let's look at, uh, we'll do an increase here, a decrease here and uh, a change in quantity demanded here. Um, so, um, all right, mathematical notation, delta, or the, the triangle, the, the change, the difference. So this is a, a change in uh, quantity demanded. Uh, so let me get uh, a different color. All right, so an increase to, when we increase uh, demand, that's going to be a shift to the right. All right we're going to shift our gonna shift our demand curve to the right, um, and that's going to give us an increase. If we are decreasing demand, we're going to shift our curve to the left. And uh, as we, we saw when we were uh, kind of looking at um, previously, all right, if we have a change in price, right, I'm cutting it close down here. Right, if we have a change in price, that is going to lead to a change in quantity demanded. Oh, I forgot to put my stuff there. All right, so that's, that's Q1 and this was Q2, all right. Um, and so we see that all we have is this change, right, along the curve. Uh, again, uh, a change in price uh, is going to lead to a change in quantity demanded um, and not a, a change in demand itself. All right, uh, with that out of the way, let's uh, take a look at our first demand shifter, right? And that is income. All right, so um, a person's income, or more broadly speaking, uh, consumer's incomes are going to have, a, 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 you know, uh, an impact on the demand for, for a good. Um, this makes sense, you know, if, if your, your income changes, that's going to change how, uh, how many of the some good you're going to buy or what type of good, so on and so forth. All right, now how that happens depends on what type of good it is. All right, um, and in regards to this, we're going to, we're going to be talking about two types of goods, right? Um, the first one is a normal good. So a normal good is a good such that as income increases, demand for that good increases. So essentially, you get more money, you buy more. All right, um, so uh, there's almost too many um, examples to, to throw out there, but things like, say, um, you know, comic books would, would definitely be one, uh, at least for me. 
um, fresh produce. All right, that's definitely going to be, or usually is at least, um, uh, a normal good. Um, so on uh, and, and so forth, right? Um, really, there's um, a bicycle, right? Um, most goods are, are, are normal goods, all right? Um, again, if you, if you buy more of it as your income increases, then, uh, then it is a normal good. All right, the other type of good is known as an inferior good. Right, an inferior good is defined as um, when income increases, the demand for this good decreases. Right, so if you get more money, you buy less of this good. Uh, a classic example of this would be ramen noodles. Um, some other things uh, that have been suggested by students are, are would be store brand items. So whether that's um, you know great value products or um, whatever Publix's brand is, or, or you know um, uh, whether it's kind of food items or, or clothing or what have you, right? Um, those might um, those those might be considered inferior goods by some, right? Uh, so as your, um, as your income increases, you, you, you might um, stop eating uh, as many ramen noodles. Um, as your income increases, you might stop buying um, store brand item, you know, you might stop buying the, the clothes in uh, Walmart and, and Target and such, um, and you might buy, I don't know, fancier clothes, right? If, if you're, especially if your, your um, income went high enough. Right but again, um, you know, ramen noodles is really the, the very classic one, right? Um, when when I was in college, I ate quite a quite a few uh, things of ramen noodles. Um, once I uh, kind of started making even the tiniest amount of money, I stopped eating uh, ramen noodles. All right, um, but um, but that is how income changes in income can affect the demand for a good. Um, and we'll just uh, do a, a quick little example um, here. All right, so uh, let's say that, I don't know, um, we'll say, um, yeah, we're looking at the market for fresh produce. We'll just use that. All right, or I guess technically we're looking at the demand for fresh produce. All right, uh, and then we will have some kind of uh, shock. Um, all right, so for this one, we'll say the government issues um, $2,000, um, I don't know, with the stimulus checks. All right, so um, in, in looking at this, one of the first questions we might ask is, would this actually uh, affect the demand of the good? All right, um, does it fit into one of those five uh, uh, shifters of demand? Here we could say, well, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty clearly um, income. Right, if the government gives you two thousand dollars, you know that's essentially your income going upwards. The same effect. All right, and. We can think about fresh pr produce. We know fresh produce is a, a normal good. So as income increases, we would expect our demand to increase as well. And we would shift that curve to the right. right um, we can uh, look at this another way as well. So uh, let's say, all right, we're talking about Andre the Giant. All right, we're gonna say Andre has uh, an income of one hundred dollars. Right, um, and we know that uh, the price. of uh, a, wait, hold on, that's not right. Um, 
So we know, and Andre's got that $100, right? Uh, he only buys unitards. All right, so that's the only thing he's going to spend his his income on. Um, and so we're going to create a uh, essentially a demand schedule is, is what we would call it. Um, but we're going to just list the, the price and the quantity uh, at which um, kind of to get some points to make our line. All right, and we're going to say that we're going to go with the price being, um, we'll say two, uh, five, 10 and 25. All right, that's that's what we'll say. All right, so if we were looking at this at a price of, of $2 each, all right, uh, then Andre could afford 50. Um, at five each, 20. At 10 each, 10. And at 25 each, four. All right, so that's our, uh, that is, I'm going to go ahead and, and try to plot that as best we can. So again, we've got price, we've got quantity. Uh, so we've got our, our prices, we've got our, our two, uh, five, and this is not going to be to scale, I can already tell. Oh wait, I lost two, five, and oh, that's okay, good, that'll, that'll do, that's close enough. All right, uh, and then we will um, put down of our quantity. So here we've got 50. Then we've got 20. We'll put that we'll say here. And that's at 5. Then 10 and 10. 5. Oh, 20, wait. Uh, 25 and 4. All right, and then we can connect these dots up. All right, and this also kind of uh, shows us how these demand curves would, would get made, right? Um, so we've got our, our prices. Here we've got our quantity demanded and this pairing of the price and the quantity demanded give us the um, coordinates to plot our demand curve. All right, um, but now let's say, all right, so, so still, um, we are still saying that, we're looking at Andre only buying unitards, but now let's say uh, Andre's income increases to $150, All right? How's that gonna change his demand, All right? Well, when well, we're gonna keep the same prices, but, but really the only thing we're changing are the quantities, All right? So now at, ooh, so at uh, $2 each, Andre can afford 75. At five, he can uh, afford 30. Uh, at 10, 15 and 25 six all right so at two uh, we'll just uh, we'll just throw that well I'll just kind of guess where, where that is because that runs off my scale but that's fine all right so five will give me 30 so we'll say 30s I'll we'll say 30s right here all right so that's gonna give me my first point uh, then at a price of 10 we're gonna have 15, and so 15 is going to be squarely in this area. Uh, and then at 25, we're going to have 6. Let's say it's, that's right there. All right, um, and so there's not a, a huge increase um, base, and then this would be something like that. All right, I'll, I'll notate it at the top. All right, but again, all right, we get that increase in um, income that allows the the person to buy more of the good um, and we do see that 
shift to the right, all right, showing an increase in demand. All right, um, next let's look at the number of buyers All right, and how the number of buyers affects the, uh, the demand for a good. All right, this one, we're not going to spend a ton of time on this one. It's pretty straightforward, All right, uh, but as the number of buyers increases, the demand for that good also increases and, of course, uh, vice versa. Um, and this one does just kind of logically make uh, make a lot of sense. Um, you know, if you have kind of, uh, you know, let's say, uh, let's say you've got this guy right here, all right, say so that's a BM businessman, all right, um, and he's got this entire uh, crowd of consumers. I'll say that's consumers A. Right, um, and so he's going to have a certain number of people in that group that want to buy uh, his product, um, and a certain group that do not. All right, but let's say that there's another group of consumers, consumers B. All right, if our uh, businessman right, can tap into, right, and connect these, then and, and get access to the cons the second consumer group, right some of the consumers in this group are going to want to buy that product, right? So now you have additional people um, wanting the product, demanding it. So if the, the number of, you can also say the number of potential buyers increases, um, then demand will increase, right? Um, so this would be similar to kind of a foreign market opening up um, to, to trade. Uh, if you if you get access to those potential consumers, the the demand for your good is going to go up. Um, if if you lose, so let's say that we, we stop trading with somebody, um, then we're going to see our the demand for our good go down. All right, so we're going to end this video there. Um, in the next video, we're going to look at the remaining three uh, uh, shifters of demand: uh, the price of related goods. Uh, ex um, expectations and tastes and preferences.